can think back that far. Um, <coughs> we, <laughs> we talked about the Jesus on the sea calming the storm, and this is the next story right after that. So Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. And they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed himself down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside, a great herd of swine was feeding. And the unclean spirits begged him, send us into the swine. Let us enter them. So we gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep, steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion. And they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So fear is a powerful emotion. Wouldn't you agree? It is quite possibly uh, the one, it's, it's possibly one of the uh, primary human instincts most responsible for the survival of the human race, fear. It keeps us out of dark alleys at night, out of the paths of fast-moving trains, well clear of steep, treacherous cliffs, running from black bears when necessary, and then doing whatever our wives tell us to do. Fear. <laughs> fear. Its goal is to keep us safe, and has done so for as long as humans have inhabited the earth. Seth Godin, a well-received uh, uh, modern guru for entrepreneurs and business leaders, calls it our lizard brain, the prehistoric lump near the brain stem that is responsible for fear, rage, and the re reproductive drive. He uses that word because it's quite possibly the most primitive part of our human brain. It's what we have in common with the lizard and maybe every other animal on the planet. And uh, as I mentioned, its only goal is to keep us around for another day, alive and safe. Protecting the future of our race. And yet throughout the Gospel of Mark, oddly enough, Jesus probably says, be not afraid more often than almost 